Hey people! As you might have noticed, the time between devlogs has increased significantly. This is not due to me not getting to work on them or me abandoning the project. I simply found that creating devlogs takes a lot of time. Time that was then missing from working on the actual project. So I decided to upload less frequent, showing off more things that changed in one video. So I get to spend more time on developing the actual game. Alright. With that out of the way, let's get to the devlog. One of the first things I wanted to get done to get a better feeling for the overall experience I wanted to ship was the environmental graphics for the first stage. I had a clear vision and a great list of sprites I plan on creating for it. That meant I could go straight to work. I started out with the ground tiles one dirt tile and one wooden board tile. After a few iterations, I had them just how I imagined. Looking at the different examples from Game Boy games helped a great deal in getting the right look down. Because I wanted the first stage to play out mostly inside barns, I needed to fill them with interactable and cosmetic only objects. For the interactable objects like platforms and so on, I created a big barrel, a haystack and a wooden board. And of course, walls. For decorative objects, I created a card wheel, scythe and a pitchfork, and some background board elements, for which I simply used the wall sprites as a starting point. To completely sell the gloomy atmosphere, I added a see-through window sprite, with this partial illumination effect, and the scene was pretty much complete. For the parts where you step outside for transitioning to another building, I drew these crops and a little fence. The only thing missing now was a background sprite, for which I drew this horizon with these sort of white fields, which blend quite nicely with the crops I used as a backdrop. Putting everything together, we get a relatively good and natural looking barn scene with only a bit of sprite work. And I think this perfectly captures the Game Boy spirit, because memory was limited and game developers had to get the most out of just a few sprites. For the farm world, I planned on having three enemy types. First, guard dogs, second, crows, and third, of course, farmers. Since I didn't quite know how I wanted humans to be portrayed in the game, I started with the simpler animal enemies. Starting out with the dog, I created the sprite with the simple shading, mimicking the style of the pig. To keep the animation true to most original Game Boy games, but also to reduce workload, I created a simple animation with three sub-images. This looked great in-game, so I kept it and created another frame as an attack animation, since I'm not a fan of enemies just hurting you by touch, without any indication why. The code for the dog was also kept as simple as possible. While in his idle state, the dog runs back and forth, changing directions when detecting a wall. When the player touches the dog, the state is switched to attacking, changing the animation to his attack sprite and also turning him to face the player if necessary. Here I ran into a realization. I didn't even have a player death state yet. You could receive damage, but you would never die just like most enemies in your standard looter shooter. So, detour time. Luckily, this was as simple as adding another state that gets triggered when your health variable drops all the way down to zero. I added another sprite for it and as a finishing touch made the player icon in the UI respond to damage and dying as well. After this quick side quest, I was back on track for the next enemy type, the crow. I settled for a similar loop to smooth the wing motion out just a bit. In general, the bird also flies back and forth between special blocks, which make the crow turn around. But instead of just attacking the player on collision, the bird actually shoots a collision line down in front of it, and once the player is detected, the enemy shoots down beak first, trying to hit the player. 
only then is the hitbox for damaging the player active. After hitting the player, or missing and hitting the ground, the crow flies back up straight and continues its patrolling. In earlier devlogs I talked about adding more juice to collectibles, because collecting something and not getting the sweet visual feedback just feels lacking and unfinished. So far we have two collectibles to consider, the small drops and the axe containers. Earlier the drops just disappeared when collected and the containers broke open without any animation. So we need to add some animation to both to make it more satisfying to collect them. For the drops I settled on a rather simple blow up animation, where the sprite gets bigger and fades out into an outline before disappearing. I also added a little bouncing animation and a small outline, so they are easier to spot regardless of background. For the container, I tried something fancier. When you now collect an X container, there's a small burst as well and you'll see a big X floating upwards and disappearing. This really sets it apart nicely from collecting the small drops and makes it stand out as something more important and significant. Now that I had enemies, I tried figuring out how I wanted to be able to fight back. My initial plan was to have a Wario-like dash attack, so you could just hit the enemies around American football style. But as time went on, I started to feel that this was a bit too basic, since the best tool to make your game stand out are its gameplay mechanics. So it was back to the drawing board. Since the player character is a chemically mutated pig, I wondered if an attack on the more chemical or toxic side would work. And to spare you all the brainstorming details, the final result was a bubble spitting attack. This mechanic served multiple purposes, for traversal and also for defeating enemies. The pig can spit out this bubble which then sticks to any flat surface, be it floor, wall or ceiling. You are then able to bounce off this bubble to reach higher platforms or collectibles. You can shoot bubbles even while in the air. So you can link up bubble bounces, which has a huge potential for interesting and challenging level design, where you have to get increasingly creative and proficient with your bubble usage. I initially thought about making the bubble simply kill the enemies, but this was a bit overpowered, so to balance things out and to add even more gameplay potential to the mechanic, I made it so that hitting an enemy traps it inside a bubble and once you bounce on it, the enemy gets killed. After a few seconds, the enemy breaks free, so you need to be quick with your kills. Lastly, I imagine this could make for interesting boss fights, where you have to bubble up certain spots in order to damage the boss or to avoid attacks. As you can see, quite a lot has changed since the last devlog, and I'm so happy with how much progress I made. The game feels really great as of now, and I'm even more confident in finishing the game at one point. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this devlog, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!